Hello, my name is Mariev and uh, I do fun content on Twitch. Uh, and t today's fun content is going to be really fun and it's about drum roll rigging yay because because that's not something i often do on the toon boom stream or on any streams in general but uh yeah so as some of you might know or not uh i my name is mariev i work at toon boom i'm a solution specialist my job is to find solutions <laughs> that's kind of cool and um i worked in animation in cutout rigging in compositing in hand drawn and rigging i think i said it so i know a lot of stuff so to, so so that's why my streams are never the same and i'm sorry if you don't never know what to expect when you come to these streams but it's gonna be fun and we're gonna learn a bunch of stuff so what i like in life it takes something that is super complicated and not make it complicated because i think that people just overcomplicate most of stuff these days so what we're gonna do today is learn a few things about master controllers but like like I, th I think my parents could be able to do that and i mean they can't tell what's the difference between 2d and 3d so so if they can do master controllers so can you so that's what we're gonna do today Yay! well can't believe i managed to cram all that information in two minutes <laughs> but i did so what we're going to do today is uh, a bunch of little things. So often people will think about master controllers as being these crazy hard things to do and work with. What is true to some extent, uh, because if you want to get a smooth head rotation like that, you need a strong rig, not a complex master, uh, master controller, because the master controller is basically just a little trinket here that you can use to go from left to right in your rig. The rigging work behind this is colossal and it's not easy, but the master controller work is quite easy. So what if we take that and instead of applying it to a complex rig like this one, which by the way, can kind of rotate on itself. So that's kind of cool. Whoa, it looks 3D, but it's not. Um, so what if we take these concepts and actually apply them to some easy things that you could use for any kind of rigs, okay? So, so, so let's stop thinking that master controllers are just about making cool 3D rigs, uh, 360 rigs rotate on themselves, okay? Because that was cool, but uh, master controllers has come a lot further uh, than that, and that's what we're going to cover today. Um, all right, so what if you have a rig that is not as complex as this one, but you have eye shapes that are a bit complex. So sometimes you're going to have a rig that is drawing substitution based so that each view is made with drawing substitution instead of being made by deformers. So like instead of having one piece with lots of envelope deformers, you have like many pieces in your camera, uh, in your library and stuff. So you have an easy rig, but sometimes for facial feature to get more control, like to be able to have cool expressions and stuff, and have, and have lots of control instead of redrawing the facial features all the time because that's annoying. Um, sometimes you're going to have more deformers on the facial features only and not the rest of the body. So when this happens, uh, sometimes just making your eye close is going to be a colossal job. So if I want to make this guy's eye close, uh, I'm, on, I'm in for a roll because there's many deformers to play with, both for the eyelids i said both not just the right one thank you and the ah geez <laughs> i have to stop doing that um because guys there's a button called show the formers and hide all others and that's the only thing we had for like 10 years but like recently in a recent harmony uh release there's a new button called show selected the former which will not hide all the others but you know, when it's been 10 years that you click on this one, I always click on this one. It's my fault. I need to evolve. My brain needs to grow. So now I can see all my deformers. And you see, there's a lot of deformers for lots of control. So each time I want to make that guy blink his eyes, I have to like play with the deformers. And you know, life is too short for me to do that in every angle and in every scene. Um, so, so, 
So Supercade so 1, today's stream is about master controllers. We're going to have fun playing with these remote control thingies, like racing cars. And uh, yes, Vert, it's going to be master controllers. So what I was saying is that as, as the years go, rigging and animation gets more and more sophisticated and beautiful and stuff. But that means there's more deformable points to take care about and... And we don't have more time <laughs> to work with them. So let's optimize this thing. Um, um, oh no, a message was deleted. Try not to use too many caps. Apparently that's what happens. Um, yeah, so instead of manually doing these eye blinks thing, that's when master controllers come in. So it's as easy as going to your rig and um, you're going to have to do that once. So the hard, <laughs> hey, Kevin. So the hard part will be that once you will have to actually do your blink. So I had to do these one by one, but like hand drawn animation or cutout animation, you will need, you will need to do it. So instead of doing it in every shot, you can just plan it ahead. So I'm going to do my blink first. Boop, 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 boop. I did it once. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a master controller with it. So, I mean, it's like a cooking show. I already have the final result. So um, I'm just going to show you the final result for now. I'm going to go in my node view, get my little master controller. And they're all identified because I am a good person. So I identify my stuff. <laughs> That's not true. It's because we're on stream. <laughs> Um, and I'm going to go get my blinks. So I have my front blink, which is the left eye here. If I activate it, I am going to activate the controls of that master controller and, 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 and here I have a little slider. So it's e as easy as you just have to animate that thing once. And then you get that group of nodes, like the eyes. And then all I did was to put it on the slider so that now I can control only my eye from a distance, which is great. So I'm going to show you how to do that. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> uh, it's okay. I show plenty of enthusiasm and it's going well so far. So I hope you can, Kevin. <laughs> um, how do we do that? It's super easy. As I said, you just take your existing I, you make your keyframe, which is not, which I cannot help you with that. You have to just do it. But once you did it once, you're going to go get your eye like that and find it in your node view. And you see my eye is isolated into the front eyebrow in whatever peg that is. So like everything under it is my eye. If I hide these, I don't have an eye. So everything must be kind of under the same peg because it's easier. And then you click on that peg, you go in your timeline, you find the peg. It's here. It's my F I N eyebrow. And then you just click and drag to get all these frames for your eye. And then all you have to do is go to your master controller toolbar. If you cannot find it, you have to right click find the master controller. I'm just going to call them MC because it's way long, way shorter and it's better. So you find the MC um, toolbar and you get it. And in there, there's, <laughs> there's more and more buttons every year. So the one we're going to focus on is the easy one. It's the slider wizard. Anyone can do a slider wizard. They're amazing. I love them. And then you click on this. Whoa, you have an interface. So what, what a master controller is, is it's basically the software writing a script for you. Because if you worked on Harmony well, well, 15, yeah, 15 is the one who introduced these master controllers. So it's like, if you worked on Harmony 15, you had to write a script yourself. And you know, it's been years since I wrote anything. Hello world, that was the last thing I wrote. And then I was like, scripting is not for me. <laughs> um, but, but. But yeah, so this will write a script for you. So you don't even have to write it. It's insane. It's lovely. All you have to do is say, OK, under these pegs, and you have to collapse your peg, by the way. Remember, it needs to be collapsed. 
um, from I want to record the animation from frame 18, uh, from frame 8 to 17, and you don't even have to write it because you, you, you just have to select them. It's already there, like it's amazing. And then you, you choose, do you want to invert the direction? Do you want horizontal layout, interpolate between poses? Let's not do interpolate between poses because my old one had it and now I want something different. And by the way, you can change that after. So even if you make a mistake, who cares? You can fix it after. Yay. And then you give it a name because it's important. So that will be my uh, Twitch, <laughs> because I'm going to delete it after. Twitch I Twitch front eye blink. By the way, I'm using front and back. That's because it's a it's an older nom no naming convention for cutout back in the days when we didn't have rotating rig. So by convention, it's still like that. The left side of the screen is the front and the right side of the screen is the back. If you have a front view, just saying. So right is the front. No, left is the front and right is the back. I don't know my left and my right. Oh my Lord. And then I do Crete. Cre cre <laughs> create. <laughs> I'm losing my English. And then it's going to ask you, where do you want me to attach that thing? And please, please, for like making your life easier, create yourself a composite made, made to receive your master controllers. Because otherwise, you're never going to find it after. You're going to have to like look for it, and it's annoying. So here I have my master controller comp. And that's where I'm going to save it. And then it's going to write a script for you. So you see, these are all my other master controllers that I have in there. So I'm just going to save it. And there you go. Magic. I have a little node here that is a master controller node. And it went to my master controller composite along with all its friends. I put it here outside of the box and zoom out and we're going to see a little slider. Oh my God, that's so cool. So if I click on that slider and by the way, always go outside of where your, your frames are because otherwise you're going to mess around with your frames. So I'm going to go back on frame two just so that I don't mess around with my keyframes. And then, whoa, I made a master controller. How complicated that was. Yes. I do stuff on YouTube, and yes, it's with a cyan bird. It's me, secret identity revealed. Oh my God. Um, um, yeah, so you can also find me on YouTube. I like I like to make videos. It's just it's just fun. Um, so now that I have this master controller, what I can do is go into a little yellow box here. Da -da -da -da. And uh, in here, there's a lot of things that don't make much sense. It's fine. I don't understand it either. But the thing that does make sense is the attribute. And this is where you should go play and have some fun. Um, by the way, you can make your window longer to reveal a lot of fun stuff to uh, play with. So here you have like little colors for you to color the box or something pretty great. Uh, you can change the name. So this is going to be my Twitch. The eye, front eye, it's important. And then I'm going to go get the, uh, get, 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 where is it? I want it to be horizontal. Yeah, so if you uncheck horizontal, it's going to be vertical. If you don't think it's the right uh, way, you can also invert your master controller if you ever need to. Um, and, uh, and you can also change. Oh yeah, yeah. You can also change that so that each time you open the scene, it's gonna like open, which is great. But I don't. So like, there's many more things you can play with. I'm not gonna cover everything because we have lots to cover, and there's still only 30 minutes. No, 45 minutes left. Time flies. Time flies. Okay. So close. This was one of my first master con uh, ma master controller wizard. So who has any questions before I go on? I'll check the chat as I move that little um, MC elsewhere. By the way, they always appear in the middle of the universe. So if you want to move it, guess what? You just put a peg on it because that's how you move everything in Harmony. So I'm going to put a peg on it here. 
I'm going to use my animate off so that I don't put any keyframes and I'm just going to move it somewhere here. So it's not so that when it appears, it doesn't appear on my character. I twitch on Twitch. Ooh, <laughs> I see what you did there. Um, right. OK, so how do you make a master controller appear? Because at one point you're going to press sometimes you're going to press on a button that is called hide all controls and you're going to lose your master controller. So how do you make it appear? Well, there are many ways to make it appear. You can either click on it, which is what I usually do, <laughs> because at first that was the only way to make it appear. And, you know, my brain doesn't evolve quickly, so I'm still lost into the old ways. But I'm working on it. You can click on it and then press on show control. And huzzah, it's going to be there. <laughs> Amazing. There is also a master controller view. So I'm going to hide it using hide controls. I'm going to go to master controllers view here. And here you see all the master controllers that you have, including the MC Twitch. You know, I can never write stuff the right way. Like, what is this? So Twitch. <laughs> I'm sorry. I tried. Um, I'm going to post it here for us to remember forever that I cannot write properly. But um, yeah, so <laughs> Twitch. All right. Uh, if you click here uh, in the view, there is a little button here, show master controller. It's going to appear also. So that's another way you can do it. And that's great because you don't have to find it in your node view. It's just there. And if you press this, they're all going to appear. All the master controllers that you have and stuff. Uh, the other way <laughs> is to go, to go, to go here. In the master controller toolbar, there's a little box that's called show master controllers and you click on it, you're going to have uh, another thing here that you can use to, to show your master controllers. So that's great. I still need to figure out how this one works. Oops. And, and yes, yeah, so that's it. And no, that's not it because there's the last way and that's what I want to show you today during the stream. It's going to be fun. It's, People think of master controllers as being only sliders and stuff that you can slide um, your animation with, but there's more and that's what I'm going to show you. So first I will just show you the sliders first because that's what we did. That's great. So I'm going to, by the way, I mean, if you're, all your controllers are there, you can also just uh, select them like this and show them. So these are my master controllers. I have some for many things. I have one for the full body rotation. I have one for the top only. <laughs> this is weird. What's going on there? I have one for the bottom. <laughs> one for the head. I also have a head up and down, but that's in progress. It's not amazing. And of course I have the eye blinks. And uh, yeah, so I have these. Um, but what I also have is woo, the little function. I deleted the box by mistake. So I'm just going to make it, put it here again. So these are my functions. So the difference be between a function and a master controller is actually they're kind of the same, but I like to think that they're different. So the functions usually they affect, they can, they, they, they don't only affect, okay, okay, yeah, because master controllers, they affect keyframes and functions are going to affect parameters. And that is amazing because, you know, master controllers are great for rigging and animation and cutout and stuff. But what about compositing, right? I'm a compositing artist as well. And I want, I want, I want toys to play with as well. Okay. So when you go to, if I show you little functions I have here, I have some of them. <laughs> so it's great that I can animate my blink with the slider, but what if I want something else than a blink, right? Uh, what I can do is activate my deformer, but to do that, I have to zoom and I have to click on the tiny, oops, tiny, 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 tiny little eyelash here, or like this one. And you know, it's, Annoying, but that's my fault. Um, 
but so I have to like make them appear. And as you see, as you saw when we began the stream, I'm not good at that. It's not something I'm proficient in. Um, so instead, what I like to do is just have. Oh no, <laughs> my functions. No, what I like to. What I like. Thank you to do is just have a little box here that can be like, hey, activate the master, activate the deformers on my eyes. Thank you. So I just click on this and, and the deformers are coming, right? Right? How cool is that? And this is super easy to do. I mean, it's hard to script because I don't know how to script, but like Harmony is going to write it for me. So that's insane. So now I can just have this and activate it and like start to animate my eyes and be like, oh, I'm so happy. Yay, I'm smiling. It's oops, <laughs> my nose is leaving my face. That's weird. Ah, uh, so so yeah, you can then animate your eyes and be like doing weird stuff, and it's gonna work. Yay. Um, the other ones that I have, I forgot which one that I have. So let's find out together. I have, oh yeah, I have one for my mouth because the mouth of that character is a bit of a nightmare to get and that's also my fault because there's no line. So I don't have anything to click on if I want to select the bottom lip. I have one for the top lip because there's a line, but there's not on the second line because I thought it looked weird. So I can't really select the bottom mouth to have a mouth shape. So I always had to go into my no view, find the bottom lips and like activate the deformer. It's, it's annoying. So instead I made a little I made a little checkbox that made my mouth master controller appear. And then if I want to make that boy smile, I'm gonna make that boy smile. And it's gonna be pretty. <laughs> because who needs teeth, right? Yay. So you can do that. Alright, so let's catch on with the chat. How would you plan and implement the master controller build to a production? It does take longer, right? Uh, well, that okay. So, so, so it's written. I haven't made one this robust yet, but I'm learning so much. So, so it's really important to make a differentiation between rigging and master controllers because they're not the same. You can have a very easy rig with master controllers and you can have a very hard rig with master controllers and both are going to be used for different things so I, I i think many productions will benefit from having a slider that makes their rig turn around even if it's not smooth so uh even if it's not a master control even if it's not a 360 rig that rotates on itself uh you can use it so so i don't have because i don't have many rigs what I do have one. Wait, yeah, I have another one that I can pull out. Go away, elf. And uh, let me go get that quickly. Yeah, is it here? Mm. Aha! I hope it's the good one. No, it's not. It's the old one. Ew. <laughs> Take it away. Uh, well, I don't have it, but maybe for a future show, I'm going to have it. Oh, is it this one? Oh, that's the good one. That one is more beautiful. So let's say you have a very easy rig, okay? This is like, this is the smallest rig ever. It's like super small. Like this is not even the head of the, like if you show this in comparison to like the old other guys rig, like <laughs> this one is something like like you could fit that bird into that other guy's mouth like that. So yeah, um, go away. So if even if you have a very easy rig, like like this is just one shape, one shape. The arm is just one whole shape. So even even with an easy rig, you can you can use it to do maybe the expressions. So you can do your expressions in advance, and you can just. Uh, go get the face or the eyes, for example, uh, like this. Find it in your node view. And even for an easy production, just being able to choose within your expression with a little slider can be very useful because unlike hand-drawn or like basic rigging, 
where we can just choose drawings into the library or the drawing substitution view. Uh, like I would with my mouth here. You can't really hand pick frames that are made with keyframes. Like these eye shapes are not drawn. They're, they're animated with deformers, which is starting to be the norm. Like we don't draw that much about like the eyes and shape and stuff. The mouth is hand drawn a lot as well, uh, still, but like the eyes are getting more and more deformers because it's so easy, it's a circle. But I cannot pick my expressions in my drawing substitution view like I would with a mouth. So like to have these little eyes with the deformers, uh, then I could highlight these and go get myself a master controller for these eyes. And it takes five seconds to do. Of course, you don't do that for like incidental characters because whatever. But like for your main pack, uh, definitely that's very interesting uh, to do. And uh, then here I will have my expression like that. And of course, now they're interpolated. My rig is not meant to be interpolated. So I'm just going to go fix that and remove the interpolation, which is what you should do with basic rig. So now I can just choose between my poses. So I just think master controllers can be useful to be like a thing to browse through your poses since, since you cannot see them into your drawing substitution because rigs are getting more advanced and we are uh, drawing less for some things. But like for the for the, 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 the arms, I still have to draw them every time I make a new one. Uh, so like I wouldn't need a master controller for the arm. That would be overkill because why use a slider if I can just go here and pick it up? Right, for the mouth, yeah. I mean, why would I have a master controller which where I, I don't even see what the drawings are? Why, where, if my drawings are here? So like, if you have drawings, don't, you don't need a slider for your master controller. But if you have a master controller, if you have a deformer mouth, then you will probably benefit from a few master controllers, right? Um, and I'm not talking about crazy master controllers that are very, very sophisticated and do everything in your rig. These are very cool, but they're not meant for every production. But the easy ones I'm showing you today, I, I'm pretty confident that you can put these into more most production and you're just gonna have a good time. All right, so next question from Pasha Animation. Do you recommend to use master controllers for snap style and mission, or this style would be easier to do only with substitutions? Well, that's the thing. So, so, so the the line between just drawing substitutions and the formers is getting thinner and thinner because even for us, because I use this rig for oh, what happened to your arm? Yeah, I use this rig for a very very snappy animation, uh, like like this. This is this is super snappy. Uh, yeah, I messed it up <laughs> because I played too much with the master controllers, but like. This is a very snappy animation. It's just like a little wink. But you can still benefit from using master controllers. Uh, master con yeah, master controllers, because the eye shape here, I didn't use drawing for them because I didn't feel like redrawing all of these. Because if this is drawing and I'm like, but what if my bird is laughing a bit more and I want it to be a bit higher, then I can just do micro emotions with it which is way better, honestly. And I'm, a, I'm an artist, I love to draw, but I don't like to waste my time. So like when I draw, I want it to be worth it, like for a new mouth, uh, because putting deformers on that mouth would be just weird because it changes shapes so much. And I wouldn't have, and, and, it, and you can have a master controller mouth. That's not what I'm saying. It's just that sometimes it's not useful. So, so I, I really am a big advocate of trying to remove the line between what is hand-drawn, what is animation, what is deformer, what is cut out. Like, just do what feels right for you. Um, um, I worked on a hand-drawn production, but to save time, <laughs> but to save time, instead of redrawing the mouth all the time, we had hand-drawn animation, but we just had a rig, a, we just have a mouth on top where we would choose a drawing substitution. That was great, that worked fine. All right, so I'm going to go back to what I was talking about before this little thing. I went on a tangent. That never happens. <laughs> it happens every day. Then I go on a tangent and I leave something on my stove and then things catch on fire. That's my life. Or I forget fruits everywhere. Um, 
Okay, so back to what I was talking about before. So if you want to have these little, ooh, where are you going to? These little functions, these are the things that people are always scared of, but they're really useful. Heck, I even have one to make my master controllers appear. That's great. So I don't have to find my box all the time here. So I like that. Um, so you can find them for rig, okay? But I also said that it was useful for compositing. So I'm going to show you how it can be useful for compositing as well. So in that rig, I have a necklace that shines. And the shine, usually effects are left for compositing, but that's different because it comes with the character. So, you know, it's integrated inside it. So it works. Um, I can also adjust if I want to see that effect or not using these boxes, because sometimes the effect is just too much to process. I rigged that character and I was aware that it, that effects do not belong in a rig often, but like I was careful with it. And I do know that um, it's a small effect. Like it's just a match resized and a glow. It's very light and it doesn't uh, break my rig in any way. Okay. So be careful. Don't put too many effects in your rig. But then with the, the slider here, I will be able to control how much that thing glows without having to open my, my properties. Just like that. So if it's up to zero, it's like this. And if it's like that, it's different. So you can manipulate your effects from far away with a function. That is, it, it's, it's kind of like a master controller, but it's not what people think a master controller is. So, so it can be so many things. And do you think that's very hard to do? It's not. It's super easy. So I'm just going to show you with another effect uh, that I'm going to do right now. So what if I want that character to have what I call the inverted shadow, uh, inverted lighting? So I'm going to go here quickly. I will give that character a mad blur. So the mad blur is great because it allows uh, to have something behind your character. By the way, I need a composite to flatten it. Otherwise, it's going to look weird. There we go. Always flatten your character. It makes it easier. Um, and what you're going to be able to do. Oh, wait, no, actually, I, I have even better than that. Yeah, even better. So, so. For that character, yeah, okay, I know what I'm going to do. So that for that necklace, instead of using the one I've used, uh, what you can do is, um, yeah, I'm going to get rid of those. So all you have to do if you want to control an effect from a distance is you uh, click on the function wizard, which is that thing here. Oh, you click on it. You have this thing that appears. So that box is scary at first because you're like, whoa, there's scripting in there. So this is a little box that will have scripting, but like Harmony is going to do it for you. That's great. So you have a couple of things to choose from. So first I'm going to select my notes, these two. I'm going to go to add selected notes. So you don't even have to write and script where your notes are. Harmony is going to find them for you. Amazing. So then you find these and then you choose what you want. So a checkbox widget, a point 2D or a slider widget. Um, checkbox is a checkbox. Slider is a slider we saw. And the point 2D is like, you know, the square that we always see where you have like something. I'm going to show you later. So I want a slider widget because I want it to go from A to B. And now the, in the attribute, you're going to find all the attribute that are uh, available for you to put a slider on inside your effect. So it, this includes like the radius, the directional angle, the directional fall off rate and whatever. So you can put some um, elements on there. And then if you go here, you can have the max and minimum values. Um, I recommend pressing on the arrows because it's easier. And uh, yeah, so that will be my minimum and my max values. And then I just press OK. And you choose where you want to put it. I'm going to put it right here because that's the composite I have here. And uh, there you go. Now, um, if I move this, not too far. <laughs> 
and I go here in my effects, I'll be able to manipulate that effects that effect with the slider. And you can merge, you can you can link that to any parameter that you want, really. So this for me is really useful when you light a character because then you can have a system and you can like use these light sliders instead of go, uh, always going into the uh, little icons. Another thing that can be useful, and I'm going to use a shape because it's going to be easier for all of you to see. I'm going to use this drawing hey -oh, hey -oh. here. I'm going to go make a little drawing. Amazing. So I'm going to take that drawing with little increments in it and I'm going to light it up with a beautiful effect. <laughs> Always put your line art on your line art and your color art on your color art. It's important. Okay, so I have this thing here. I will do that. Yeah, that's perfect. And then what I'm going to do is in what I call the inverted lighting that I wanted to show you before. Man, is an interesting thing for my style work. Oh, wait. Well, yeah, I hope you're going to check it later. I think it's going to be uploaded on YouTube at one point as well. Um, I'm going to get the mad blur. And the mad blur, like I've shown you before, it's great because it allows you to make something glow uh, uh, radiantly, like, outside. Um, and that's great. Like that. But you can also have it inverted. So to look something like this. Right? And so now it's going to use the outside of your shape and kind of put the color inside. So I'm going to change it to a very pink color so that you can see. So since my matte blur is on the outside, when I'm using my, my radius here, uh, it's affecting the inside of my shape uh, as well. All right? And you can even pair that with a matte resize. Honestly, I think matte blur and matte resize are always together. I always use them together. They're like best buddies. Um, so you can take that shape and like you can also resize it with the matte blur. The oops, depending on what, yeah, like that. Um, yeah, I had to put it in the ne ne negative because I inverted my matte blur. Yeah, that was what. That's the thing that was going on. So why am I doing this? You ask because it's ugly and it doesn't make sense. But because I'm lighting with the outside of my shape, I can then use a cutter. Cutter. and cut this with it. I'm going to cut my shape with itself like that madness and I'm, and I'm going to invert it so now all I have is the thing that is inside whoa shenanigans that's so cool yay and what this will do is because now I'm using it with like a uh, the, the radial type, but you can also use it as a directional type. Uh, and I will just give it an angle. I'll remove the matte precise for now, just not to confuse people. There you go. So with the matte blur now, uh, you can use the directional like this. And I will set it to an angle of like 45 degrees. Like that. So like this is another way to light your character that is kind of similar to the thing that we always use in compositing called the apply peg transformation. You know, when you have like a thing like that and you're going to light the shape by itself instead of using this. And then you put a highlight node. And you do something like that. Get a bit. This one will be green instead. Um, yeah, it's hard to see because it's way too bright. So I'm going to put something like that. Okay, so now you see it. Um, there you go. Okay, <laughs> so now I'm going to invert it. 
And you know, that's what you would get with a apply pack transformation. Okay. But I I like it, but sometimes it's not it's not perfect as I want. So I like to use the match resize because uh, sometimes for in some uh, it's some situation it it works better. So here instead I'm gonna have this and instead of in, oops, <laughs> not the match resize instead of dragging the peg. Uh, what you use is the mad blur's uh, directional angle. Right? So you could use that setting, and instead of setting it by yourself all the time, what you could do is set it to a master controller that I was showing, showing you before, so like with the function wizard. So let's do that. I'm going to click on my mad blur. I'm going to go on my function editor, the thing I've shown before. Not a function editor, editor, the master controller function wizard. Sorry. And then I'm going to go here, go to point uh, 2D. I think point 2D is going to work. I haven't tried this, OK? So I just thought of that. For attribute, I'm going to choose the attribute that I need. Oops. Oh, no, what have I done? I closed it. Uh, Actually, it doesn't work, but I can use the slider. Yay! So I'm going to use the slider wizard. And it, instead of the radius this time, I'm going to go get the directional angle. I'm going to call it the angle. And for the minimum value, it's zero degrees, but the maximum value could be like 360 degrees. But that's how a circle works, friends. And, and that's it. I'm going to press OK. I'm going to put it here and then, whoa, I'll have a master controller. And if I move it, oh, well, wait, it needs to render, but I'll be able to change the angle. So depending on the scene, I can change the angle of my shot. That's kind of cool um, for how it's lit up. Yay. Are you ready for more? Because I have one last trick up my sleeve. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, point 2D works great when it's coordinate based value. Uh, I know I used it for a. Yeah, I know for what I used it before. It was great. Uh, I'm going to show you before I, I show you my last trick. So I have a drawing here. I'm just going to put a peg on it. So for that peg, what I'm going to use it for is um, I'm going to set a point to the widget, but I'm going to go get the scale. And I'm going to set my minimum value to one, my, my maximum value to two and stuff. I'm not going to touch it. That's going to be my scale MC. And that'll be it. I'm going to put it here. So then I'll have that tiny, tiny box. And if I move that box, Woo! <laughs> I'll be able to put the scale of my peg in there, which is really great. I used it because I animated that crown and I made it all made of jello and stuff and it was bouncing around and it was really cute. So like, hello, I am a crown and it's just fun. So it's super easy and I hope it's going to be helpful to you in your production or in your project or something. It's really great. Um, yeah, so sliders, function wizard, they're all pretty great. I love it. Uh, I love to use them. Um, they're really great. And honestly, I've shown you like the tip of the iceberg. There is so many ways to use these. So just for the operation, there is toggle attribute. There is, sh uh, it's like yes or no. <laughs> if you have a checkbox in your effect, that's yes or no. Um, so like the mad blur here, for example, you have invert mate. Invert map, I mean, and all of these you can set them to go to attribute. So these are the checkbox. Then you have the show and hide node controls. So that's when you use these two buttons, like show controls, hide controls. So that's true. That's good for master controllers if you want to make them appear or not. You have enable disable node. So if I if I use this on a drawing, I can make it disappear or not. You can show and hide your deformers, which is what I've shown you with the eyes. It's so fun. There's so many like 
it's just fun. Like have fun with those. I I feel I feel like a mastermind. You know when they're like, um, um, what do they say in movies when the guy is like typing on the keyboard and it's like breaking in the matrix or something or in, entering the. I forgot what they say, but it's funny and it's overrated, and I'm here for it. And um, yeah, so I have one last trick to show you today. And this one doesn't have anything to do with master controllers. It's just what we did prior to master controllers. So it's going to be like a little trivia. OK, so back in the days, there was no master controllers. So we had to make do with what we had. With, and what we had was pegs and function links. So let me break your brain a little bit. So you remember my effect in the mad blur? We had the directional angle and like the slider is great, but sometimes for directional angle and like rotation and stuff, you kind of need something that rotates, not something that is a slider, right? Yes, function links are great. <laughs> so here my directional angle, I would like it to be more like a circle or something. So I'm gonna uh, make a drawing. Okay, I'm gonna make a fancy little controller here, okay? So that'll be the base and that'll be the needle. Okay, okay, look how pretty this is gonna be. It's gonna be insane. Like this. For the base, I'm gonna have a little circle. I'm gonna put it here. I'll color it. I don't care for that part about my uh, line art and color art. It's fine. This is my circle. And then I'm just gonna put a check mark because this is where it's gonna start. Perfect. And now for my needle, I'm gonna make a little rectangle with another color. Boop. Like that. And then I'm gonna use these colors. Maybe have it in the center. There we go. And now with that, what I'm going to do is give each of these a peg because that's what you do in life. You give pegs to your nodes. And then here from my needle, I'm going to go get my pivot point and actually put it where it makes sense. So then I can like whoop -doo, move that around. It's great. And then what am I going to do? What am I going to do? I think keyframe knows the answer. I will go on the mad blur. No, wait, I am, um, yeah, important. Um, I'm going to go on the peg. And I'm going to take this. I'm going to take the rotation angle. I will put a keyframe on it. Like that, just to make sure that there's animation. And then if you go here, you can copy the function link. What this will do is it will kind of link the rotation of that peg to the directional angle of that mat blur. Paste function link. Whoa, and now look at what we're going to have. It will be gorgeous. Remember that little angle thing? You see, you see, the directional angle is the same as my needle here. So if I rotate this, It's rendering. Ooh, how amazing is that? So now I can say like, oh, my scene is going to be lit from that angle. And what do you know? My thing isn't going to be lit from that angle. Eee, how amazing is this, right? It's pretty cool. But <laughs> I think I broke Yoche. I'm sorry. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> and it's so easy, right? So, so yeah, but just be careful because if you do the opposite, sometimes it breaks. So like, don't put the effect on the peg, put the peg on the effect. All right, stay safe. Okay, okay, and let's push it. What if I want um, that base thing that when I scale it, I want the radius to be bigger. So I'm going to take the base a circle. I'm going to put the pivot point where it's relevant. Thank you. And then I'm going to use the scale. I will lock the scale, however, so that it's only one value. I will 
uh, I will create a animation curve on it. I will copy the function link. And what if I paste it to my mat blur and that the size of the circle controls the radius? Okay, okay, let's see that. I have no idea what's gonna do. So paste. Seems like it's working. Okay, 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 okay. And now let's make it make let's make the circle bigger. And why is there? Oh, it's because there's a little icon here. Let's delete it. So now if I make this bigger, the radius is supposed to be also bigger. Or smaller. What it did do something. Oh, it's because it was rendering. I'm sorry. Oops. I have to be patient in life. So I can make it a bit smaller. Mm, it's not working exactly as I want, but I do know that it could. So I will need to... Oh, I got it. Yeah, it's because it's too small. Okay, okay. I would just need to make the circle way bigger. So, you know, with the circle, it was not that great. Like for the for the for the radius, I would use the I would definitely use the function wizard instead. So so let's get rid of this. And I'm gonna set my radius back to local. And uh, yeah, so for the radius, I would definitely use instead the oops, the function wizard. Go to slider, set value, get my radius. And then that's why it's better. It's easier to choose a minimum and maximum values. Like the other one, it was not working just because I was going between one and two radius, but I needed to be at, at least 22 to see it. So I write 22, I'm gonna write 20, maybe like 30 here, which is my maximum like that and press okay. And now I have and now I will have this whoop, slider for the radius. Oh yeah, and then I'll have this little trinket for the orientation. Are you happy? Are you going to use that? <laughs> I'm making history. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's fun. I like to use harmony to do stuff it's fun <laughs> yay so so what is the takeaway for today right master controllers don't have to be that scary they're not made only for rotating rigs they're good for everyone everyone you can do so many stuff with them and then and then you can be happy yay um yeah, the last thing I want to show, because I still have seven minutes, I'm looking at the time, don't worry, um, is just to show you a little bit, because people often talk about rigging and how complicated it is, and it's true to some extent, it is complicated. Like, don't go thinking this type of rig is the first one you're going to do, because that's the biggest mistake I think you can make. <laughs> Oh, thank you, Evelyn. You're you're one of the sweetest person I know too. So like, props. You inspire me to be sweet every day because you're sweet. <laughs> yeah, thank you everyone for watching this stream. That's true. I forgot. I got too carried away by technical prowesses. But like, remember that if you want to do a rig like that that rotates. It's just a lot of work and you have to ask yourself, is it worth it? Or is it, is my, is the design I have suited to rotate on itself? Which is another big question. Sorry for the laugh. I have roommates and they are crazy. So, <laughs> um, so, so, um, what I mean is that when you have these crazy rig like you just have to ask is the design suited to be rotating like that because it doesn't work with every design like I designed this character so that I knew from the start it would be easy to make rotate right <laughs> I also like the laughter it makes me happy every day but like yes yeah, so you have to think because uh, on the on in the drawing that character had other uh, design like sometimes they have stripes on their shirt they have like things that makes it harder for them to animate so 
always question yourself, is my character made to rotate? Or what can you change to make it easier? Because sometimes a little decision like that can make your animation that much easier. All right, and just to show you, it's, it is kind of a, uh, like the work you have to put is just that you have to build everything in advance. And after that, you just set it on little controllers. So it's pretty fun. So um, where's my lip sync? I lost my lip sync. Hmm, maybe it's in another rig. <laughs> I have so many versions of that character. Um, actually, I think I have a, I have a master controller for my, 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 my lip sync. I don't, I'll have to find it into my other save files. Oops. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, I hope you had fun. I sure had fun. And, um, I'll use my rig to say bye-bye. <laughs> Well, not yet, but like eventually. That's not a real bye-bye. Wait, I need to animate it. Oh, that's hurt. that's gonna hurt. So like, yeah, you can have your character be like, see ya, people. And you can do you can go take a peek at my YouTube channel because I put up videos every Wednesday. Yay! Um, yeah, so I hope you had fun and I will see you again in April. Bye bye.